Kenya's Prime Minister, Raila Amolo Adinga, is here at the Harvard School of Politics to explain his vision on making democracy work in Africa. With the extinction of the opposition, the checks and balances died with it. So the institution of the presidency came to emasculate all other institutions of democracy. Nepotism, tribalism, corruption then became the order of the day because there were no checks and balances. So the Africans had therefore to go back to the trenches to fight for what has been called the second liberation of Africa. That struggle was, uh, was protracted because in that period, that was the period of the Cold War. So it was not only after the fall of the Berlin Wall that the wind of change that blew in Eastern Europe also began to blow on the African continent. Let us forget the past. Let us not continue to live in the past and blame colonialism for our underdevelopment. At the time of independence of Kenya and even Ghana and so on, the economy of Kenya and that of South Korea were all at par. In terms of per capita income, in terms of the levels of poverty, literacy rates, and all those major economic indicators were equivalent, Kenya and South Korea. 45 years down the road, the economy of Korea is 40 times bigger than that of Kenya. Bigger also than that of Ghana. So you ask yourself, what is it that the Koreans did right that the Kenyans got wrong? If you answer that question, then you're on the way to resolving the African problem. The Koreans and countries that have taken off able to mobilize their human and natural resources for faster socioeconomic development. And that is where we must begin as Africans. That Africa, which is the richest continent in terms of resources, is also the poorest. That is a paradox in kind. Why? Because Africa's resources have been plundered and used to develop other countries. Africa has continued to depend on aid. Money has been poured into a bottomless pit without much to show for it. Most of that money has found its way back to where it came from, in private bank accounts of individuals. Yet African generations of today have to pay for debts which were incurred by those corrupt leaders, which did not build anything. Every African child that is born today inherits a debt of thousands and thousands of dollars. We are saying, let us put that in the past and move on. AIDS will not develop Africa. We need to now look at what we can do for ourselves. Investment is the most important. And secondly, trade. Investment, we must begin with domestic investment. We can, how do we break this vicious cycle of poverty? Which starts by saying we are poor. Therefore, we cannot save. We cannot save. Therefore, we cannot invest. We cannot invest. Therefore, we cannot develop. Hence, we are poor. When I was announcing my campaign, I said, what are the solutions to Kenya's problem? So Kenya to take off first, number one, I said, infrastructure. Number two, infrastructure. Number three, infrastructure. <laughs> I have no reason to doubt, uh, to, to change my mind on that. We need to open up our country. 
That's why we are investing very heavily in roads construction, in railways construction, in the field of IT, IT infrastructure. We have constructed through public-private partnership a fiber optic uh, undersea cable from Fujaira into, into Mombasa and into Kenya. And we have already rolled out the, the infrastructure network throughout the country. We are now setting up IT villages all over the country. We believe that this is the future. We want to set up business process outsourcing centers which are going to create employment for a number of people. Some of them already have been set up in our country. Yesterday, the American government announced that they were threatening travel bans against 15 Kenyan government officials for, in their words, failing to support the reform process and not holding to account those responsible for post-election violence. What's your reaction to such a policy statement? I really don't hold brief uh, for the US government. The US government is totally entitled to do whatever they want to do. Uh, if they are convinced that uh, the people they are banning from coming to the United States have been involved in forms of impropriety. Um, as you know, for example, the envelope of uh, those who were alleged to have been involved in the uh, post-election violence was a secret. It was handed over to Kofi Annan who handed it over to Juan Moreno Ocampo. So we are not privy to what is, it contains. Uh, if the US government knows, we will be happy to share the information with them. <laughs> the Prime Minister's speech highlighted the reforms that Africa and Kenya in particular are undertaking to bring about greater democracy in Africa. Next, the Prime Minister travels to New York to continue talks at the UN General Assembly. This is Mombi Michelle reporting for WEBN News in Cambridge, Massachusetts.